The Department of Bioengineering started around 2003. Um, there has been biomedical and bioengineering at Stanford for many, many years, and lots of contributions have been made, but we've never had a department. Finally, around that time in 2003, the deans of medicine and engineering, instead of saying, it needs to be in my department, it needs to be in my department, they said, why don't we make this department be in both schools? That decision was critically important and brilliant because now we have this department that has roots both in the School of Medicine with its excellence in biology, science, clinical care, and then in the School of Engineering with excellence in the discovery of new methods and new technologies to be applied to problems that society has. For me, bioengineering is a discipline that figures out uh, you know, either biological, chemical, mechanical, any kinds of means to truly communicate with um, what life does and you know, then figure out what it's good for. Bioengineering is the science of engineering where the substrate, where the tools are from biology. We think like engineers, but we understand the biology and our goals are uh, to build, design, repair, uh, and study biological systems quantitatively. Bioengineers have uh, two missions. The first mission is to understand biology and medicine and the problems, the scientific questions that are vexing at the moment, but they also have a toolkit, an engineering toolkit for solving problems, for designing the solution and implementing it. Another key advantage that Stanford has in establishing the Department of Bioengineering is that the School of Medicine and the School of Engineering are literally across the street from one another. Well, there's no place like Stanford. Uh, and the big reason, I would say, is because if you take my office uh, in the Clark Center here, if I look out one window, I see one of the best engineering schools in the world, and if I look out the other window, I see one of the best medical schools in the world. And that's not enough by itself. You also need a culture where people really are open to this kind of stuff. They kind of like, you know, have you to cross over boundaries and are comfortable, speak a little bit of the languages these other people speak so they can communicate with them. There's another way that Stanford supports our work, which is uh, having a business school also on the same campus. So we tap into the faculty there uh, who advise us on how to actually commercialize these technologies. It's, the cool inventions aren't cool unless they make it into patient care. The impact of Silicon Valley is partly inspirational because there's a sense of can-do uh, attitude that is in the whole community around us. Of course, a lot of that was born in Stanford. Stanford and Silicon Valley have a great history of working hand-in-hand -hand together to change the world. And we all know about the IT revolution and the role that Stanford played in that. Many people, including us, believe that one of the next big waves of innovation and technology application in society is going to be biotechnology. Stanford is an amazing place for people interested in interdisciplinary problems like myself. Uh, when we first got some crazy ideas for how we might develop a non-invasive prenatal test for Down syndrome, it didn't take long for the doctors to sign on and begin collecting clinical samples so we could actually uh, try out our scheme. Working in the bioengineering department has been incredibly exciting. The faculty, the students, the staff, they're, they're united in purpose to kind of, let's build this, let's make it great. Of course there were challenges. There are things that have never been done before, either at Stanford or ever, but the positive attitude of my coworkers makes me very confident that we can succeed.